Chapter Fifteen of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter Fifteen. Hypatia. Four Fifteen. Brucker. To the list of Alexandrian philosophers must be added the celebrated Hypatia, whose extensive learning, elegant manners, and tragical end have rendered her name immortal. Hypatia was the daughter of Theon, a celebrated mathematician of Alexandria. She possessed an acute and penetrating judgment, and great sublimity and fertility of genius and her talents were cultivated with assiduity by her father and other preceptors after she had made herself mistress of polite learning and of the sciences of geometry and astronomy as far as they were then understood she entered upon the study of philosophy she prosecuted this study with such uncommon success that she was importuned to become a public preceptress in the school where plutonius and his successors had taught and her love of science enabled her so far to subdue the natural diffidence of her sex that she yielded to the public voice and exchanged her female decorations for the philosopher's cloak in the schools and other places of public resort she discoursed upon philosophical topics explaining and endeavoring to reconcile the systems of plato aristotle and other masters a ready elocution and graceful address, united with rich erudition and sound judgment, procured her numerous followers and admirers. But that which reflects the highest honor upon her memory is that although she excelled most of the philosophers of her age in mathematical and philosophical science, she discovered no pride of learning, and though she was in person exceedingly beautiful, she never yielded to the impulse of female vanity or gave occasion to the slightest suspicion against her chastity the extraordinary combination of accomplishments and virtues which adorned the character of hypatia rendered her house the general resort of persons of learning and distinction but it was impossible that so much merit should not excite envy the qualifications and attainments to which she was indebted for her celebrity proved in the issue the occasion of her destruction it happened that at this time the patriarchal chair was occupied by cyril a bishop of great authority but of great haughtiness and violence of temper in the vehemence of his bigoted zeal he had treated the jews with severity and at last banished them out of alexandria orestes the prefect of the city a man of a liberal spirit highly resented this expulsion as an unpardonable stretch of ecclesiastical power and a cruel act of oppression and injustice against a people who had inhabited alexandria from the time of its founder he reported the affair to the emperor the bishop on his part complained to the prince of the seditious temper of the jews and attempted to justify his proceedings the emperor declined to interpose his authority and the affair rapidly advanced to the utmost extremity a body of about five hundred monks who espoused the cause of cyril came into the city with a determination to support him by force meeting the prefect as he was passing through the streets in his carriage they stopped him and loaded him with reproaches and one of them threw a stone at his head and wounded him the populace who were by this time assembled on the part of the prefect routed the monks and seized one of their leaders orestes ordered him to be put to death cyril buried his body in the church and gave instructions that his name should be registered among the sacred martyrs hypatia who had always been highly respected by the prefect and who at this time had frequent conferences with him was supposed by the partisans of the bishop to have been deeply engaged in the interest of orestes their resentment at length arose to such a height that they formed a design against her life as she was one day returning home from the schools the mob seized her 
forced her from her chair, and carried her to the Caesarean church, where, stripping off her garments, they put her to death with extreme barbarity, and having torn her body limb from limb, committed her to the flames. Cyril himself has by some writers been suspected of secretly prompting this horrid act of violence, and if the haughtiness and severity of his temper, his persecution of the Jews, his oppressive and iniquitous treatment of the Novatian sect of Christians and their bishop, the vehemence of his present indignation against Orestes and his party, and above all, the protection which he is said to have afforded to the immediate perpetrator of the murder of Hypatia be duly considered, it will perhaps appear that this suspicion is not wholly without foundation. Hypatia was murdered under the reign of the Emperor Theodosius II in the year 415. End of chapter 15